Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse, the king of cheap. They said it couldn't be done, but I did it anyway. Again, I've had a video like this before, haven't I? But really, they said it, do they say it couldn't be done or shouldn't be done? Probably a combination of the two. Morton, I hope you're watching over at my playhouse because I've done the impossible. Okay, so I may have exaggerated a bit. I haven't done the impossible. Morton over at My Playhouse just had a video on getting VMware 7 running on his uh, IBM 3650 Model 2. And he ran into some problems. And I thought, well, you know, it's I'm getting ready to start up my VMware lab again. And uh, I've got some older equipment in here. And, uh, you know, I want to make sure my stuff will run VMware 7 as well. So... Uh, I ran into some problems just like, uh, Morton did. So let's get the video started and I'll show you what I, what problems I ran into and what I did to overcome them. So I guess what I'll do is show you what happens when you try to install VMware 7 on unsupported hardware. And then I'll try and show you what, how to fix that. So I'm on a virtual machine running Windows 7 because that's how the, IMM and the IDRAC modules work best, so I've done videos on that. So I'm going to come over here. The first thing you want to do is copy. You know, if you want to go stick a USB drive in, into the computer, that's fine. You can install it from there. I just create a work directory on the C drive on my virtual machine. And in here I have the VMware ESXi image for Lenovo right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here. And I'm going to do a remote control session <clears throat> in single user mode. And we're going to try and install ESXi 7 or VMware 7. Now, I already have a USB key inside of the Dell server uh, to install it onto. And I've already done this in practice. I did this before I started the video so that I can show you what's going to happen. Now, the reason I'm doing this is uh, Morton over at my playhouse, sorry my gain is down on my microphone again. I need to just tape that. Uh, Morton had a video come out uh, on today on Friday about how he could not get uh, ESXi 7.0 to run. It's not supported because of the processors. So the first thing I need to do is go over to Tools and Launch Virtual Media and I need to mount, need to add an image Go to the root of my C drive here, go to the work folder, and there's the Lenovo image. And you can download that directly from Lenovo. I'm going to map it, and I'm going to go ahead and mount it. And then I'm going to, I like to click on details so that you can see when it's being read and read and, or read from. And I'm going to come over here to tools. I'm going to go ahead and power on the server. Now the reason I'm doing this is I'm getting ready to set up my VMware 7 lab. I don't I don't want to use 6.7 because my VMUG subscription is coming up for renewal. And uh, there's some question as to whether I'm going to be able to continue to use 6.7 in my lab. So I wanted to test version 7 on my IBM Model 3650 Model 3 and my Dell R710 to see if they'll work. I know it'll work on the R720. But uh, I'm running Windows on that. I don't have any need to run VMware on there. I want to dedicate a couple of machines to a to a VMware lab. So we got to wait for this to boot up, and then we're going to hit F12 and boot off of the remote uh, media. So I'm going to get ready to press F12 to select the boot device. And then I'm going to come down to CD, DVD, ROM, because that's what we're emulating. So we hit Enter. And then it should start booting off of the remote image. Go ahead and press enter. Now again, just pretend I'm not at the customer site. Uh, pretend I am not there to put a USB key in, uh, an installer USB key. I can do all this remotely. That's, that's one of the benefits of having an enterprise level or grade server. You can't do this with 
off-the-shelf components. Well, you can, but by the time you buy the little card to go in there to give it uh, KVM capability, um, you know, you, you could have bought an enterprise-level server, uh, you know, be, being pulled out of production. I mean, this is an 11 or 12-year-old server. It's still t just as powerful. It's not as power efficient, but it's as powerful as a modern server. I don't mind using old stuff. But, uh, you know, this is the kind of stuff that vendors do to keep you from using that old equipment. Um, Got to buy the latest and greatest equipment. And there's two things that are going to keep me from installing onto this IBM. One is the processors are not going to be supported with version 7. Nor is the uh, Mellanox uh, card I have in here, the 10 gig networking card I have in here. Because you're going to see when it comes up, it's going to, it'll give us an error message here eventually. Let me move my face down into the corner here. Oops, sorry, wrong one. Move my face further down to the corner and move this over here. There we go. Need a bit more. So you see it identifies it as an IBM Model 3650 Model 3. And you see it's got an e, got two E5620 CPUs in there. Okay, so everything looks okay for now, right? Uh, you know. It'll install on most systems, but it doesn't mean it's compatible. So we're going to press enter to continue. Uh, F11 to accept. Now, like I said, I already have a USB key inside of this machine in the internal USB uh, connector. So I'm going to choose that one to install it on. Press enter. And then I'm going to install, enter for OK, US default, go ahead and enter my password. See, they lull you into uh, a false sense of, hey, it's going to work. And there's the first of our problems. So. This is what you're going to see if you try to install it on these older units. First, you're going to get a CPU support error. Okay, it's not supported. And the second one I'm getting is on the PCI device, and that is on the Mellanox 10 gig networking card. That is no longer supported either. So let's start this over again. I'm going to go ahead and F11 to reboot. And F11, yes, to cancel my install. And it's going to reboot. I'm not going to make you sit through the reboot. But we'll come back uh, to the reboot, and I'll show you what you need to do to get around this CPU problem. All right, so we're here at the boot screen again. So we're going to go down and choose our CD, DVD, ROM. Now, we need to be quick when it goes to boot. So press Enter. And you're going to want to press shift O. It'll even tell you on the screen here, Shift O to edit boot options. So down here on the bottom where it says boot option, it says run weasel CD-ROM boot. That's fine. Put a space in there and you're going to uh, paste the following or you're going to type the following command in there. And that command is going to be allow legacy CPU and it is case sensitive equals true so allow legacy CPU equal true and then hit enter and then what will happen is VMware the installer will continue to load and we'll wait till it comes back to that other screen I'm not gonna have you sit here and go through all this uh, and it could take some time because, uh, you know, we're loading off of uh, shared media across the network. So 
let I'll let this come up to the next screen and then I, uh, we'll go from there. All right, so we're at the same screen we were at before, so we'll press enter here and F11 to accept. And we're gonna choose the SanDisk Cruiser Edge that is plugged inside of the server, so we'll hit enter. Now I've already installed it on there, so it's gonna ask us whether we wanna update or install, and I'm gonna choose install. So I come down here, press the space bar, press enter, and US default. And let's go ahead and enter our super secret password and make it a super secret password. You know, with some numbers and letters and symbols. Enter to continue. Now this is where it failed before. And looky there. Mm -mm -mm. Found during system scan. The CPU in this host is not supported by ESXi 7. Please refer to the whatchamacallit enter to continue. But looky there. Even though we got the warning message, it's asking me if I want to confirm the install. So let's do F11. Let's see what happens. Oh my goodness, it's working. Okay, I'm going to let this install. We'll come back when the uh, when something exciting happens or changes, and let's see if we're we continue to be successful. All right, so now uh, the install is completed, so it tells us to uh, eject or remove the installation media. So I'm going to go ahead and exit up here, and I'm going to press Enter to reboot, and then we should shut down and reboot, and all should be well with the world. So. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch this. We'll let it reboot and then we'll come back up when it gets to the interesting stuff. As you can see, it's shutting down. You can see our E5620 processors and now it's going into reboot. So we'll come back when, uh, when it starts to boot up. Now, I've gone into the BIOS ages ago and told it boot off the internal USB first because I also had Windows Server installed on here. This is one we did a a dual boot on before and you can't really put Windows Server on a USB key like you can the ESXi so here we go VMware hypervisor booting in five four three two one and here we go so wow Booting, booting, booting. Watch that server booting. Here we go. Yay, VMware ESXi version 7. Two, it's on, it sees it's on the IBM. It sees two E5620 processors at 2.4 gigahertz each with 48 gig of memory. All is well in the world. I'm so smart that I figured this out. Aren't I? Yeah. Pretty soon we'll be at the web interface and we'll be able to get things uh, further configured. And yeah, no big deal. We won't have a 10 gig Mellanox card in it, but we'll figure that out, right? NFS client. I don't use iSCSI shares. I use NFS shares, so it's good that that's loading. Fat, VFlash, migrate loaded. It's fun, fun to play with this stuff. That's why I have all these wonderful servers. Now, it's Morton's fault I got this IBM 3650. And this unit still is going to be given uh, to a client. We're just waiting for them to get their construction done. So in the meantime, I've been, you know, playing with it. The server, not the client. There we go. It booted up. However, I don't have an IP address because I don't have a network cable connected because it does not see my Mellanox 
drive connector. So uh, I'm going to hook a network cable up and come back and then see if we can't log into this bad boy. All right, so I have a gigabit network connection hooked up to it. So it tells me it's available at 5.54. So let's flip over there and take a look and uh, see what the VMware screen says. All right, so we're at the login screen. Let's go ahead and log in using our super secret password. And no, we're not going to join. And no, we're not going to save this password. So let's take a look around. So the host is potentially vulnerable. Yeah, we know that. I'm running a customized ESXi 7.0. And I'm running ESXi in evaluation mode. And the license will expire in 60 days. So let's go ahead and close those error messages and let's get in the meat of things so it sees it as an IBM x3650 model 3 so it's all good there it sees my two CPUs uh, and counts them as a total of 16 logical processors two sockets four cores per socket plus hyper threading memory is 48 gig SGX have no idea what that is so it does not see my Mellanox uh, network card, but it does look like everything else is working. Uh, the image profile, the date and time on the host uh, are not correct. Uh, the date is, but the time, well, yeah, the time is not. It is not, well, it might be UTC time might be correct, uh, but it is actually 2.48 p.m. So, um... Let's go to Managed. Let's go to Hardware. And it does see the... One of the other issues with uh, ESXi 7 was it also deprecated some network cards. But it looks like it's seen my QLogic cards just fine. Now, it sees my Mellanox 10 gig uh, SFP Plus card. But uh, it's not working. It, it doesn't see it under... It doesn't see it under VMware. Let's go look in. No, it doesn't see it under. So it's not loading the drivers for it under under VMware. But it does see it as a device. So worst case, I could pass it through. If all I have to do is buy a new network card, a 10 gig network card for this server, I consider myself lucky. Uh, and everything else, it seems to have identified. Uh, it even sees the... Uh, uh, server raid controller even though we're not using it now keep in mind when i do my virtual machine storage i do it on the uh, synology flash station using either nfs or iSCSI shares i don't depend on local storage that's not what i get these servers for so other than that it looks like a winner winner chicken dinner all right so we've gone through a reboot and no runs no drips no errors now the reason i did this is because the article that I read, and I'll share that article with you. I'll put links in the in the uh, section down below in the description. Said that you would need, every time you reboot your server, you would need to press the Shift O and put that command into the kernel, or go out and edit the uh, boot.cfg file. So for whatever reason it's not making me do that now the next thing i want to do is i want to go ahead and add a data store and we'll call it Arabor. and it is 192.168.5.17 and then it is forward slash volume one forward slash nfs lab let me verify that name again. NFS Lab dash ESXI. Click on Next. Click on Finish. And there it is. Now it shows the drive type is unknown. Let's see if we can go browse the data store. I should have some ISOs under there. I do. So uh, let's uh, go one step further. And let's see if I can create a server on here. 
we'll just do a quick one. So we'll do create register VM. Bear with me a second. Create a new virtual machine. Uh, sent OS 7. That's an ESXi. It's going to be Linux. It's going to be CentOS 7. Next, uh, we're going to use Erebor storage. Uh, we're going to give it a, let's give it four CPUs and yeah, that's fine. Two gig of RAM and let's give it a 30 gigabyte hard drive. And that should be thin provisioned, yes. Uh, everything else will leave as is, except we will use a data store, go to the ISO and use CentOS 7. Everything else looks good. Next. Finished. So it looks like it created the machine. We'll click on it. Let's go ahead and turn the machine on. And install. Oops, sorry. Got to click my mouse on there. Install. Press the enter key. There it goes. Booting up. CentOS is one of my favorite Linux distros. That and Debian, I really like them. They're just very simple to set up. No nonsense. Ubuntu's okay, but they've they've really kind of I don't know. I just don't know. Oh, look, it even gave us the graphic installer. Oh, so let's see here. Let's see if I can't make the screen a bit bigger. All right, automatic partitioning selected. So that is fine. We'll click on done. Uh, we'll do uh, Chicago as the time zone. Let's see. Do we have an option to do network? We'll turn that on. We'll let it get an IP address. Uh, it's getting 5.55. That's fine. We'll click on done. Let's see, uh, it's going to prompt us for username and password. Yeah, so we'll set our root password. Click on done. Uh, we'll go ahead and enter Mr. Adama or Commander Adama. Give him a super secret password. Click on done and uh, we'll, we'll let it finish installing. It's pretty much hands off it from now. Uh, and then we'll come back and uh, I may or may not install the tools on this. I just wanted to see if it would work and if it would work with my shared storage and if uh, VMware would throw up any errors, being as it's on the unsupported uh, server or processor. So we'll let this run and we'll come back when something significantly good or bad happens. All right, so it tells us CentOS is now successfully installed and ready for you to use. Let's go ahead and reboot. Not bad for uh, only one gigabit uh, per second uh, shared storage, huh? Those Synology NASs are... Wunderbar. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and log in as a root. Anyway, it's installed. The tools are not installed. 
So if I come back here to CentOS 7, actually, let me get this out of the way. And yeah, you'll see the VMware tools are not installed. I could install them. It does see, let's see, just want to make sure it sees everything. Monitoring looks good. Okay, so we've created our first virtual machine. Granted, we haven't installed the VMware tools, but it's something for an advanced thing. It looks like VMware 7 is running fine, even on this unsupported hardware. So, I would say it's a success. So, uh, yeah, let me close it and accept the cookie. So, I have to give credit where credit is due. And the author of this article, William Lamb, uh, is it walked me through this. And um, you can see right here where he says, you know, shift plus zero. And this is the command that you type and allow legacy to be true. And he, he puts some links to some other interesting and crazy workarounds. Now, it says the boot option above is only temporary. And you will need to pass in this option each restart. But it doesn't appear to be affecting me. Now, I've also done this on the Dell, so I'm going to go ahead and reboot the Dell R710 a couple of times and uh, make sure it's functional on there as well. And I'll include a link to this article down in the uh, description on, uh, for the video so you can go look at it yourself and so you can click on this one. Interesting and crazy workarounds because there's a lot of people out there a lot more knowledgeable than I am that have, uh, that have done some stuff, but uh, there you go. Now let's be clear about something. This is in no way supported by uh, VMware. And I would, I would never do this in a production environment, only use this in a lab environment. It's just a way to kind of stretch your hardware out to get a little more life out of it. In fact, you see that box right here that I'm pointing to? That came in, ooh, it's dusty. That came in via FedEx today. And that is gonna be a machine I can actually run VMware 7 on natively without having any trouble. And you'll have to stay tuned to see what that video is all about. But yeah, um, if you're running in a lab environment, you should be okay. And time will tell. Uh, now, the other thing is I'm a member of the VM users group. And I'm an advanced member. So I pay about $200 a month. And, I, and you get licenses for ESXi and for vCenter and for a couple other products. My question to them was, say I have some of this older equipment. And I want to keep running ESXi 6.7 on it. And then I want to slowly introduce VMware 7 into my lab on, on new machines. Can I use both licenses with the key that you're going to send me? So I'm waiting to hear back from uh, VMUG users group on whether, whether that is uh, okay with them or whether that's allowed or not. Because if not, then I'm going to have to, you know, I'm going to have to use this workaround on some of my older equipment to get a lab up and running because I'll be... You know, I should probably be replacing those Dell R710s with something a little more oomphy. But uh, I've, I've got one here in that box that I'm replacing it with, so we'll see how that goes. And keep in mind, when I use these enterprise-level machines, I really don't use them for their storage. I use them for their virtualization, for the fact that I can cram a whole shitload of RAM in there. Uh, and uh, I have the iDRAC controller on them, so I can remotely control them. Um... But as far as storage, you know, hell, I use the Synology and as is, why not? Uh, so there you go. So I encourage you to go over to my playhouse and watch Morton's video where he tried to get ESXi 7 running on a model uh, 3650 model 2. Even after putting some, he, he got a hold of some CPUs that are, uh, what's the word, uh, not known uh, to be, uh, regular uh, CPUs uh, and he was hoping those would work and I think with this fix I would like to see him try this fix that I just did see if he can get it to run on that older model 3650 model 2 that'd be kind of fun and interesting to see but if nothing else go over and check out that video because he also put an NVMe drive uh, into that unit as well so that he could have a, a data store on it uh, me, like I said, I'm using shared storage. I've gone all in on it. Uh, and, uh, you know, if this continues to work, I'll find another 10 gig card. I've got a couple out there that I'm looking at right now that can run SFP plus connections. But, uh, yeah, please go check out Morton's video at my playhouse. 
and uh, uh, see, see how he did with his uh, 3650 Model 2. So there you go, YouTube. We hope you found the video entertaining and informative. Please leave us a like, thumbs up down below, leave your comments in the comments section. What do you think? Is it worth the time and effort? Uh, you know, I told you I wanted to do a, a new VMware lab, and, and that's my goal. That's what I'm going to do. And I want to be playing around with a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, donate if you're so inclined. PayPal, Patreon, your generous donations help keep this channel going. Uh, so we can get more stuff in here like this and uh, play around with it and make it work and make make good make fun videos for you guys so and I all of you that do contribute I appreciate it I hate to make it sound like I'm begging for money but I have to remind people all the time and if you can't afford to donate in these times please I completely understand I uh, look I support a bunch of youtubers as well but I can't support them all so you have to pick and choose and hopefully I'm one of the ones you choose and if not, no hard feelings. I just want you to subscribe, hit that notification bell, and come back and see us again. And please don't ever forget, we'll see all of you on the other side.